Easy Blueprint Live Minimap System. This powerful tool redefines the way minimaps are created and integrated into video games, offering developers the ability to instantly establish a real-time navigational aid. With the capacity to easily set up player and enemy icons along with objects that can be made visible or hidden, this system ensures your minimap is not just a tool, but a dynamic part of your game experience. Beyond the mere functionality, the Easy Blueprint Live Minimap system opens up a world of customization. Leveraging an intuitive blueprint setup, it grants you complete creative control, allowing you to tailor every aspect of your minimap to perfectly match the aesthetic and thematic needs of your game. Transform your game's navigation with a minimap that's not only useful, but visually cohesive and entirely your own. Let's begin by extracting our resource pack. I'm gonna right-click on the resource pack, and I'm gonna select Extract All. The minimap system folder contains our minimap system. The minimap demo folder contains a demo that we will be filling here to demonstrate how to add the minimap system to your own project. I'm going to open both projects so we can see some differences. I'm going to open the minimap demo. We can see there are some blueprints, blueprint libraries and blueprint interfaces as well as folders for widgets, textures, sprites and materials. If we go to our other project, Minimap Demo, we can see it's the third-person template with starter content and level prototyping, as well as characters mannequins. Uh, these all come by default with Unreal third-person project and there is an extra folder called Demo Assets. We can consider the demo project to be any project that we want to add the minimum. I'm going to use the migrate utility that Unreal offers. So I'm going to right click on the folder minimap. I'm going to select the migrate. And now I'm going to navigate to the content folder of the project I want to add the minimap. In this case, the minimap demo. I'm going to select this folder. And we can see that the minimap has been migrated. These are always the steps that you need to add a mi the minimap system to your project. Now, let's begin with adding our minimap system to our character. This could be any project. We are using, as we said, the third person template. So let's go find our character. In the content browser, on the third person folder, in blueprints, we can find the playable character. This could be your own pawn, your own character, doesn't matter, it would work the same way. So, we are opening the third person character, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a child actor component, and to this child actor, for the child actor class, we're gonna select PP Minimap System. Now, when we want to call the minimap to appear, what we have to do, uh, for us, I'm going to use the begin play, but that's anywhere we want the system to appear. We're going to get the child actor component. From the child actor component, we're going to get the child actor that is hosted inside. In this case, this is our BP minimap. So we're going to cast to BP minimap system. And on the begin play, so I do not interrupt this sequence of events. I'm going to do a sequence node. I'll bring it up here. And I'm going to connect the cast node to the sequence. So whatever it was doing before, it won't be interrupted. It, it is just going to create the minimap at the same time. So from the minimap, from the cast to BP minimap system, I'm going to drag a cable called ini minimap. And this is our own function. It has various settings, as you can see, to set up our minimap. But before we go into the settings, let's see what the first result is. I'm going to press play. And we can see we have a minimap. We cannot see the character because we have not set an icon. Let's begin overviewing our settings. The first setting is perspective or orthographic, which would be the 3D representation or the 2D representation of the minimap. If we choose orthographic, we can see that the minimap became 2D. 
The next option would be circle border, which if we choose it on off, if we choose it on actually, we can see that the minimap became a circle. The third and the fourth option would be which borders are is the minimap using. If we have any custom border like the ones that we have in our textures, we have the UI fantasy and the UI sci-fi for the square border. Let's put the circle one on the circle and the square one on the square. Let's go to play. You can see it changed the border to the one we selected. We choose the circular also and see the circular border. The next option is camera zoom. Adjust this setting to control the zoom level of the minimap camera. The next setting is the camera angle which changes the angle of the minimap. For example, if we have a camera like a top down with an angle camera game, uh, we would need to rotate the camera accordingly. Let's demonstrate these two variables. I'm gonna select a lower value here and if I'm gonna press play, we can see our minimap is much more zoomed in. If we would change to let's say a 45 degree angle, we could see that our map now has a 45 degree angle, top down angle in that direction, we could set that to be on that angle, as it serves a better way to show corners and walls. Let's show that in orthographic also. The next options are for the enemy, the enemy sprite. We're going to demonstrate this a little bit later. Let's start with the player sprites. So, the player sprite is just the icon representation of the player. I'm going to select the player icon sprite. The next one is the player size sprite, which needs to change based on orthographic or perspective. This setting determines the height of the sprite. Be careful when setting this value, because too high values in perspective mode can show an offset to the minimap and the value should be always below our camera. And lastly is the player sprite rotation. We should always rotate to the default rotation of our model. For example, this mesh over here has a minus 90 rotation here or 270. So we can copy this over here and 90 degrees on X. So our sprite is horizontal to the camera axis. So if we press play now, we can see we have our player sprite. Let's demonstrate the height variable. If I have a roof above my head, right now the sprite is visible because the default value is 300. If I set the value to something lower, like let's say 50 or 100, doesn't matter, something lower than our ceiling, then the sprite will not show because it's below the ceiling. The next part of the system is to be able to hide actors from the minimap. For example, right now we can see these tubes over here, but we want to hide them. So, I'm gonna select tube, I'm gonna go to its details over here and select add. I'm gonna add a child actor. Now, for this child actor, I'm gonna select the class PP Minimap PP Hide PP Minimap Hide. I'm gonna press play, and now this tube is no longer visible on the minimap. When we have our own actors that we want to hide, we can add them. Uh, we can go to their own blueprint. Like for example, let's hide the bullets from this turret. Let's bring the turret to the level. And let's play. Now you can see that the turret is throwing bullets that we can see in the level. It actually heated our AI and the AI died and it disappeared from the level also. So let's hide these bullets. I'm gonna go to content browser, go to BP projectile. I'm gonna add a new component, actor, and for the child actor, I'm gonna select BP minimal height. 
I'm gonna compile and save. And now our bullets are invisible. Now, as you can see, when they're getting hit, they die and they disappear on the map. Lastly, let's customize how our minimap looks, what size it has and what percentage of the size the minimap is. We're gonna go to our widget on the minimap folder and open our widget minimap. By selecting the overlay, we can move the minimap around and anchor it to where we want based on anchor or just scale it with our mouse. The next thing is with our minimap image, we can scale down how big our minimap we want it to show. For example, if I select here 1 in the original scale, and we go to play, and we can see that it's actually fitting exactly right now. Let's select the blur border to be off. It's actually fitting more than we want with size 1. So if I go back to our minimap, so scale the minimap to point, let's say point 0.8, that's a good value. Now it fits perfectly. If you found this asset helpful, or are interested in diving deeper into the world of Unreal Engine, I highly recommend exploring our Unreal Engine courses. These courses cover everything from blueprint to level design for games, offering you a comprehensive learning experience. Thank you for watching and goodbye!